Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then subscribe and click on that bell icon below so you can get notified when I come out with new iOS tutorials. If you've ever had a problem where you had to present the users with multiple choices with one tap of a button, then this will be a great video for you because that's exactly the problem that we are facing in our app right now. We have to give the users a way to add a new day or a new activity by tapping one button. So first, you're gonna learn how we can reuse that floating action button in a previous view controller. Then you're gonna learn how we can present the user with options by using the iOS action sheets. By the end of this video, you have a good grasp on what action sheets are and how to implement them. So what are we gonna build? Well, we have a floating action button on the first screen that allows the user to tap and add a new trip. There's only one action associated with it. We wanna adopt the same convention and add another floating action button to our second screen. But now this button will have two actions associated with it. So how do we handle that in iOS? I created a mock-up and showed my patrons on Patreon site how we can handle this with the use of action sheets. This allows us to provide multiple actions from one button. This is how action sheets are created with a UI alert controller object, but they only appear as an action sheet if you set the preferred style property to be an action sheet. With an action sheet, you can show titles and messages. Many times you won't need these because the actions are pretty obvious, but they are there if you need them. Below this, we have our list of actions. These are buttons the user can tap on to perform some kind of action. You can add as many as you want. If you have a lot of actions, a scroll bar will appear so the user can scroll through all the actions. So how does iOS know how to separate that cancel button from the rest of the actions? Well, it knows how to do this by looking at the actions style property. If it's set to cancel, then it puts it at the bottom and separates it from the rest. Now, you've observed in other apps that these buttons are usually blue, with blue text, right? This is simply the tint color. We can set the tint color manually through the action sheet's view.tintColor property. Okay, so now that you know all the parts of the UI alert controller, let's add our floating action button to the screen and have it open up our action sheet. But before we do that, let's go into Bitbucket and update our board of tasks because we haven't gone in there for a while. So here you see doing this, we customize section headers. So we already did that. So let's put that over into done. Customize rows. Yeah, we did that too. And this is the one we're working on right now. Add floating action button and action sheet to allow the user to add days or activities. Now in this video, you're just gonna learn about the action sheets. We're not going to perform some action to allow you to add days or activities. That will be in the upcoming videos. Okay, so we are in our Xcode project and I have a note here to myself because I wanted to tell you guys about this. This is something you might have to update because the help view, I tested it again and the frame has changed because now we're showing a navigation bar at the top. So it offset this help view. So what I did was, here, I'll just show you the change. And click on this button right here to see the before and after. So it used to be view.frame that I would set it to. And, you know, that was fine because the frame, the origin, frame has origins and size. The origin was 00, zero x0, zero, y0. Zero. And that put it right up in the corner. And that, that's perfect. But now that we have that nav bar, it offset it by, I don't know how big the nav bar is, uh, 44 or 50 something points, uh, depending on if you have the smaller, the larger titles. So we need an origin of zero, zero, and that's exactly what the bounds has. The bounds has, always has an origin of zero, zero. So we're gonna use that instead. Okay, let's look at our trips view controller. Okay, we wanna copy over that floating action button from this view controller to our activities view controller. And looking at the button here, it looks like it's going below the safe area there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reposition it now, as soon as I try to move it, it's going to try to add it to the table view. So if I hold down the command button, it'll keep it on top of the table view, like on the layer it was already on. Okay, and as you can see here, it's snapping to the safe area margins. So I'm just going to let it go right there. And then let's actually, I don't think it has, yeah, it's just using auto resizing. So also what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some constraints. So we'll have to constrain the width and height. And then I'll just set this. It seems like that should be 20. Yeah, let's leave it like this. 20 from the safe area. And this, it seems like it should be zero to the safe area. 
But let me just do this, just to double check. I'll add the constraints, and then I'll look at them again. Let's look at the bottom here. Yeah, it's going to the bottom of the super view. You can see it right here. So let's double click on this to edit it. And instead of the super view bottom, let's go to the safe area bottom. There we go. And change that to zero. There, and that should be resting right on the safe area bottom. And we could just run it just to make sure it looks good. Close our help view. Yeah, that looks fine. All right, great. So now we want to copy it to the activities view controller. So let's make sure it's selected here, right here. And then we'll copy that. We'll go to our activities view controller. Now, one of the warnings that I have to give you here is it makes a difference on where you paste it. <laughs> because like right now we have the activities view controller selected, you know, the top level. And if I just paste it right here, what it does is it adds it to the scene doc. So we have our, our button right here. So we don't want that. And same thing, if I, if I click right here on the next item down, that will also add it to the scene doc, and we don't want that. If we click on the root view and we hit paste, uh, what happens? It replaced the whole root view with our button. <laughs> so we don't want that either. The thing you have to do is uh, you have to come down and look at the, for the safe area and then paste it on the safe area. There we go, and it just adds it to, to the middle there. And as you can see right now, the button is underneath the table view and the background image view. So let's just drag it down here so it's on top. And then we want to add those two constraints that put it down in the corner. So uh, let's just go here. And, you know, we can just do this. We can say it was like 20 from the side. And it was zero with the safe area, right? Yeah, so safe area is zero. Whoops. Change that back to zero. Let's add those two constraints. And it should be in exactly the same place as before. So again, let's run it just to make sure everything looks good. All right, we'll go into a trip. And we're missing the tint color right here. So let's take a look at that and see if we can fix that. First of all, let's see. Oh, you know, it lost, see it lost the custom button. So app UI button. All right, now let's try it. Okay, trip to Bali, and then we have our button right there. Now there's something else missing from it too, and that's, it has no drop shadow, right? Let's add that drop shadow. And I think we added it as a function on the button. Let's go into our resources and take another look. Button extensions, probably in here. Yeah, create floating action button. So we just need to call this function on it, and that means we'll have to create an outlet for it too. All right. Uh, this isn't the one we want, so let's go here, go to automatic. There we go. Okay, so let's create an outlet for it. We'll just call this our add button. And then in our view did load, we'll just uh, format it. There we go. So that should format it. All right, let's test that, make sure that still looks good. There we go, that looks awesome. Okay. Now we wanna create an, an action outlet for it because when we click on the button, we wanna be able to open the action sheet, right? So we'll stick that right here. And it defaults to action, that's awesome. And we'll just pass in our button there. Okay, so the first part is done, we got the Button copied over, we're reusing that. And now what we want to do is we want to show an action sheet. So how do we do that? Well, we know from the previous slide that we're using a UI alert controller. So let's create our alert controller first. And it's right here. And then let's take a look at what we have for parameters. And this is what we want right here. Now you may not know this, but the alert controller is also used for those pop-up alerts that you see. You know, those are actually uh, UI alert controllers. The only difference is that last parameter is set to something different. So let's create ours. You know, in the example that I gave you, we had a message like, what would you like to add? But I think it's pretty obvious if they're clicking the plus button, they're adding something. And then, you know, we're just saying, do you want to add a day 
or an activity. So let's start with nil for now. We don't want any title. Uh, we don't need a message. In our preferred style, I'm just going to hit dot. It's going to be action sheet. You see, the other one's an alert. So we want an action sheet. And then an action sheet needs actions that we can present or, you know, buttons that we can show. So let's do this. Let's make some more room for ourselves here. Okay, and let's start adding some actions. Now we know we need three actions. We need one to add a day, one to add an activity, and another one for cancel, you know, just to get out of it. So we'll start with adding the day action. And that is a UI alert action. It's easy to remember because it begins with UI alert. Okay, and what do we have here? We have the title, which is basically the, the string on the text, and then a style. I'll show you the different options there. So I'm just going to hit enter. And for the title, it'll just be day. And for the style, I'll hit dot, and it's going to be default. So cancel is the cancel button, and that's what puts it down at the bottom. Default is just regular style. When you set something to destructive, all it's going to do is change the button text color to red. Doesn't matter what your tint color is, it'll change the destructive action to red text. So that would be like if you're deleting something. We're not doing any deleting for the plus button because plus is to add things, not to delete things. So we're not going to be even using the destructive action there. We'll just use default for this. Okay, handler. Now this is where you put code when you click on the button. So, you know, you have a couple options here. This might look familiar to you. If you just hit enter, this is where your code goes to perform some action. Now, if you're going to be putting a lot of code in here, you might want to extract it into a separate function, which I'll show you how to do after. So for the first parameter is you're actually passing in like itself, the alert action. And then here, you know, we're not going to be adding the day or showing anything in this tutorial. So I'm just going to put a print statement in here to show that we clicked on the day action. There we go. Okay, so let's add another action for our activity. It's gonna look just like this one. So I'll speed it up a little bit. And then we're going to have an action for the cancel button. Okay, and of course the style for this one will be cancel. And there's not gonna be any handler. So I'm just going to delete that. Okay, now that I had this alert and these actions, what's next? Well, I have to add these actions to my alert controller. And that's pretty simple. You just say alert dot add action. And then I can just add the day action and the rest of them. You know, you may have figured out by now, what I could have done is I didn't have to create a separate action. I could have just done something like this. Instead of creating a separate day action, I could have just added it like that. I tend not to do that because it's kind of like, what's that term? You know, when something goes deeper and deeper, I think for like linters or things that review your code, it's called cyclomatic complexity. And it's basically just means it becomes more complex or harder to follow as a developer. And it's kind of like one of those situations where you have like the pyramid of doom, where you have an if statement inside of an if statement inside of an if statement. And it, you know, it just drills down deeper and deeper and deeper. And it can get harder to follow. So I tend not to do that. So I'm just going to undo it here. And uh, we want to add our day action instead. And we're going to do the same thing for the activity in cancel. There we go. Okay, everything is all set. We have our alert controller all set and ready. So now what do we do? How do we show it? Well, believe it or not, this alert controller is actually just a view controller. So how do you show a view controller? Well, you just call it present. And it's this one right here, view controller to present. And we want to show our alert. Animated, sure. Completion, nah. So there you go. And like I said, it's a view controller. So if you want to check it for yourself, just hold down command and you can right click on UI alert controller. And you can see it right there, UI view controller. All right, so let's run it and see how it goes. Okay, we go into a trip and we click the plus. There it is. So we have day or activity cancel. You know, maybe, maybe I will add a title to this and say like, which one would you like to add? So yeah, I changed my mind. Let's, let's add that. 
Okay. And we'll just take another look at it here. Yeah, there you go. So that's the title. If we create a message, the message shows up underneath it and it's a little bit lighter. So you may notice now that the text color is blue. So it's using the blue, the default blue tint color. So like I said before, the UI alert controller is just a view controller. It has a root view, just like a view controller. And we could just set the tint there. Now, one of the things you may wonder is, is well, why didn't it use the tint color of our storyboard? Because if we come into the storyboard and just double check here, you see we have our global tint set to the tint. And you know, this is a bug, this black and white representation here, because if I click this, you know, it should look like this by default, it should show our tint color. So it didn't use that tint color for some reason. And maybe it's just because it's being created not from the storyboard, but from code. That's kind of like an assumption I made that was incorrect. I thought it would use that tint color and it didn't. So we'll have to set that manually. So at some point before we show it, maybe we can just do it right here. Yeah. Then that should change the tint color. There we go. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is that our tint color, this orange color, could be mistaken for a destructive action, you know, which is the red color. So it's pretty, it's pretty darn close. So that's the only thing I don't like about this is our tint color, our choice of tint color. It looks too much like a destructive action, and it could be confusing to the user. So what I'd rather do is just leave it blue and not worry about it. So I'm just going to delete this line. But I want to show you guys how to do that. So if you have a better tint color than I did, <laughs> that doesn't look like a destructive action. <laughs> you could set it, and it would probably look nice. Okay, now there's something else I told you about that I, I was going to show you, and that is how you can create a function and use the function instead of a code block for the action, the UI alert action. Okay, so say we wanna extract this into a, its own function. Well, let me show you something first. Uh, let me, if anyone knows how to pull up the signature for the initializer, uh, please let me know. Because when we come in here, you know, it just shows the information about the, the object itself. And I can't figure out a way to show the actual initializer parameter. Like maybe maybe if I just do this. Yeah, okay, here we go. So I just deleted and, and then retyped in that open parenthesis. So if we look at the, the last parameter here, the handler, so we wanna create a function that is similar to this type definition here, where it accepts a UI alert action and returns nothing, returns void. So let's create a function that looks like that. And then we'll just call the parameter action and it is a UI alert action. And it doesn't return anything. So that should match the signature that it's looking for. Okay, then I can just take that code, paste it here. And then let's delete that. Okay, and I think it was called handler. And then we can just type in our new function name there. Handle add day. Uh, we don't need that. Okay, that should do it. Yeah, all right, so let's run it just to make sure it works. Okay, so I click on day, and we see this add new day. So that works. And if we click on activity, add new activity. All right, so there you go, guys. Okay, that's it for this video. You learned the three steps to showing action sheets. You just create your UI alert controller and set the preferred style to action sheet. Then you add some actions. And then you show the action sheet, just like a view controller, by doing a present. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it on social media. And if you'd like to help out my channel, then you can provide a translation for just the title in the description of this video so people who speak your language can find this video more easily. All right, thanks, guys.